Okay, so, so I wanted to say a few words. I'm usually very bad at these kind of things, but anyway, I say what I wanted to say. So, uh, this is a movie called Ustaz Hotel. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a nice line which I thought I'd begin with. So, towards the end, I think uh, his grandfather says to his friend on the phone, he says, This grandson of mine knows uh, how to cook very well, but he does not know why he has to cook, right? So I'm sure all of you are uh, I mean, very good TAs, you've been, you'll be wonderful TAs going forward, but uh, our instructors also, I think there are a couple of instructors here, you probably know how to do, how to be a good TA, but uh, I think the question I wanted to answer a little bit is why should you be a good TA? So this course goes out as a open online course and uh, it's, for, it's for anybody in the world to do it. Right? And mostly students from India do it. And these are students sometimes in IITs, and sometimes out of outside of IITs, mostly outside of IITs. Very few students from inside the IITs do this. And uh, this is supposed to address the problem that maybe teaching outside of IITs is not really very high standard, or maybe the IITs have a better, hand, better standard of teaching. That's fairly true, I think, on average. So people who maybe couldn't get into the competitive exams right very well or outside and still motivated would like to learn, they get an opportunity to get good lectures, top quality lectures, followed by assessments, followed by certification. And just imagine the kind of impact that it can have. You know, someone goes through this course, learns something, gets a certificate, you know, he can get a better job, get a better life, a family can be saved. This, this is kind of impact that, you know, reading a paper and getting citations for your paper, it's completely different from that. And that is my partial answer to the why question. You might also have other answers. I'm sure other people can put it more eloquently than I did. But that's the, that's the real reason. And I hope uh, really you're motivated by that. I think you'll participate in, in this entire effort from NPTEL. And of course, we pay you also. <laughs> we do pay you. Uh, so once the course is over, we get the instructor to say how many hours you spent on it, and we pay the standard ICSR rate per hour on, uh, for, for your contribution. So you do get paid, but really I, I want you to think about the costs that we are doing this for, the tremendous impact that it has on so many lives uh, in such large numbers. I think that's, uh, that's something that's difficult to do in, in any other way. Okay, so I pl please be very motivated and interested in doing this. Swachitra so gave a very good presentation. She was a great TA for the last time. So hopefully, we'll have more people uh, contributing to this course. Okay, so I don't not, don't want to say anything more in this sermon-like atmosphere. So I'll stop here, <laughs> and uh, I'll be very happy to take any questions, or any of us will be happy to take questions from you. Go ahead. Oh, 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 so that part maybe, I mean, how many of you are uh, computer science TAs? Okay, so maybe we can spend some time together a little bit after this. So I'll go through that, uh, how to create programming assignments part with you. But she didn't do that. I mean, it was, uh, so most of, the, uh, most of the courses don't require it, but computer science courses need that. So I'll, I'll do that a little bit uh, later. Are we going by a definite deadline? Pattern? So, so le yeah, I think those things are very important. Okay, so what will happen uh, is the course is announced on December 1st, right? So what do we need by December 1st? We need the first page filled out by December 1st. So basically in the course dashboard, the settings tab. You, set, you go to settings and then edit. And then there are a few uh, text boxes. I think course abstract, course instructor bio, the video, those things. So that is what you should do immediately, okay? And that should be available November 28th. And we'll assess that, look at it carefully, and then we'll make the course, and we'll enable registrations for the course on December 1st. And then we'll advertise the course using our own means to a lot of people. And people will start registering, the forum will become active, people will immediately start posting on the forum. Last time I remember when we opened the course, within five minutes there was a post in the forum. It's like, I mean, we didn't even advertise it to anybody. <laughs> we enable registrations, so the next fifth minute there's a post in the forum. So people, you know, that, that just shows you the impact and how people out there are starved for high quality teaching and this really, they want good uh, stuff for, for themselves. Okay, so anyway, so that's the first uh, order of business. But once the course starts, the courses are going to start when? Jan 5th, Jan 5th. okay. So ideally, uh, ideally, I would say, Maybe a bit before that, we should release the first unit. OK, 
Okay, so courses are starting on Jan 5th. You should release the first unit, say, 10 days before that. Maybe December 25th is probably not a good time. Maybe let's say Jan 1st or Jan 2nd. A few days before that, the first unit is, uh, is... It's good to release the first unit a bit earlier. The reason is people are new to the new to the system, you know, deadlines, etc., etc. They're going to be a little bit confused about what's going on the first week. So it's good to release it a little bit earlier. I would even suggest if the first unit is ready, release it on December 5th or December 10th. I mean, as early as possible. It could be up for a month. It's okay. I mean, let people look at it. They'll also know whether they can do the course. Is it at the right level? Is it too high, too low, etc. So, so that, is, that is good for the first week. But, but after that, every week, ideally on a particular day, you should release content. So what do we mean by release content? So she was creating the content, units and lessons, and then she made it public, right? That's when everybody can see it. Okay, so ideally, the content needs to be created sufficiently far ahead of time, and you will be making it public at that particular time. On, say, a Monday of every week. Week after week, you release the material, you make it public. Hopefully, the material is available for you sufficiently ahead of time so that all of it is in private mode and you're just making it public. On the other hand, you might also be, you know, one once in a while, a week might be very bad and you might be working Sunday night to make it, you know, upload the material and make it public. How much time it took to upload? I mean, after I sent you the videos. Uh, initial days, it used to take time because we were figuring out all the options. But after that, uh, within three hours, <laughs> Yeah, it does take three hours of time. It's not, uh, I mean, after all the material is made available to you by the instructor, it takes uh, time for things to upload, things. Let's say they give questions, put it in activity and all of those things. Okay. So it does take time. And also, I think once you upload it, for the time for students to see it, I mean, it has to be, it has to propagate through so many things. It takes some time for the regular login or it comes immediately? Immediately, yeah, for students also. Okay, maybe that's something they've changed because initially it used to take a long time. It looks like... For instance, the moment you upload into YouTube, maybe it mm. won't be visible on YouTube everywhere. But okay. that's a okay. It's not too bad then. Okay, so th so so I would suggest you have a schedule like that. You know, you so so if if Monday you want to make the lessons public, it's good I think to have the lessons available with you at least one week ahead of time, so that you have that lead time to prepare it, go through it, and then make sure it goes out there. The the thing that is most important, I would stress this once again, is it's very, very important to avoid errors. Any kind of error, typo, simple error, complicated error, whatever error, you have to, it's absolutely important that you avoid it. Okay, it might be inevitable sometimes, in the worst case it can happen, but if there is an error, it causes so much complication going forward. So what, what is good practice in my opinion is, is to have one person create the content and then another person check it. And you can alternate that week to week so, so that the load is balanced at the same time. This goes through two rounds of checking in some way before the content becomes public. Because once it goes public, it's just so complicated to undo things. Because, you know, somebody would have seen it and he's not going to go see it again. Right? And then that's it. It gets, uh, it's very difficult to undo. It's not like a regular class where you can just call everybody and say, you know, what I said that day was wrong. Just scrap this step and change it to this. It's, it's very hard to do that in an open class. Sir, in one case, one thing that cannot be undone at all is, let's say you have posted an assignment with the wrong answers. Mm. Uh, whoever has uh, submitted it will be graded against the wrong yeah. answer. After mm. that, even if you correct it, that person may not submit again at all. Mm. So, so particularly for assignments, yeah. it's just uh, you incredibly have to, hard. You so have to go to the student view. I think that's what <coughs> you are doing. Right? So the, one of the TS was always going in. As a, as a student, entering all the answers and making sure that it was uh, correct. I mean, mm. They would solve it independently and then check it against whatever is programmed into the assignment. And then change it again if needed. If needed, yeah. Okay. Before making so that's a good idea. So what I would suggest is you also register yourself as a student in this course. You have the course admin login. Uh, if it is private, you have to do it as yourself. Yeah, of course. I mean, you can't. Yeah, so there's only one course admin. I think it's not a good idea to have multiple course admins. Maybe, did you have more than one course admin? Yeah, only one? Share the idea. Yeah, so I think that's good. Just share the ID and have one course admin ID. You can register yourself as a student and then have the student view just to make sure that everything is coming out correctly. And... Um, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. So you have to set the deadline for assignments. Okay, so every week, ideally, what we are asking faculty to do is to release at least one assignment. Maybe there'll be multiple. Typically in a computer science course, for instance, there are three or four programming assignments every week. 
So every week you have to set a deadline. Okay, so when you release the assignment on a Monday, it's good to set the deadline as the Wednesday of the next week. Okay, so why Wednesday? Why not Monday? It seems like better to have it on Monday. So many students don't have computer or internet access in their houses. So they rely on their college for internet access or coming to the college for internet access. In many cases it happens. It's surprising how, how, how big that number is outside of big cities. Cities are different, but outside of big cities that number is very big. So you have to give them that two, three days in college for to finish the assignment. So that's why Wednesday is a good time as opposed to Monday. So, you, so, so that's a good schedule in my opinion. Week one, material released on Monday. Deadline is week two, Wednesday. Okay. Invariably, you'll see in the forum, people will say, you know, all kinds of excuses. Of course, there can be very natural excuses, like for, there was uh, the cyclone in Vizag, for instance. So if people cite very legitimate reasons, you'll have to extend the deadline, and you can do that. You just you need to go to the assignment and change the deadline. That's, of course, the instructor has to make that decision, but once the decision is made, it's possible to do those things also. But typically, this is a good schedule to keep. So if you, if you do that, then you start on Jan 5th, according to our calculations, an eight-week course will end on Feb 28th. That's the last release of material. So that will be the last date in which you release material. So the course, entire course can be wrapped up by March 15th. And our exams are going to be on March 22nd and March 29th. So these are the exams in which students will come. It's like gate, you know, they have to come to a center, computer-based exam. Then based on that, they get a certificate. So the whole thing is, uh, I mean, it goes on a exact scale. So, so for instance, you know, it, TA work on campus, I don't know, I mean, it depends on the instructor. Some instructors are very strict about keeping the timeline. Some instructors are quite relaxed about TA work. But here there is, you know, there's no slack. It's just, it's good to, it's very important to f stick to the time. I mean, you miss one week, it's going to become a big mess. It just adds up. And remember, our exams on 22nd and 29th. There's no way we can change that. That's with uh, those guys there, and they have their own plans outside of that. We cannot change that date at all. So. Everything has to be over. If, if, you, if you miss something, that's it, it's missed. Can't go back and fix it. Yeah, so that's the next thing. I think, I mean, these questions, I mean, I might ask as a TA, you probably don't need to know the details of the administrative issues, but you know, students ask these questions in the forum. The forum is full of these kind of questions. Or how is the certificate given? What is the certificate? What will it look like? Etc. Etc. So it's good for you to know it, so that in case there is a question, you can answer it uh, a bit authoritatively. So the way we decide certificates is, like I said, anybody can register for the course. We've had, you know, school students register. We've had old people register. Anybody can register for the course. For the certificate, you have to come and write the exam, and usually there's an eligibility. So this technically can be decided by the faculty. But what we are going to pr propose is. You give about 50% weightage for the assignments on the online course, okay? And then 50% weightage for the proctored exam. And together, if the score crosses a certain percentage, which we are suggesting should be 60, okay? Then you get a certificate. You can earn the certificate, okay? So, so you can see, I mean, so while I say assignment, etc., in a relaxed way, it really affects whether or not a person gets the certificate. So there is a... I mean, this. So, so as TAs, you have to get it right. You can't make mistakes. If, if assignment score is wrong, and because of that, somebody doesn't get a certificate, it's just not nice. So you have to get it absolutely right, and not make uh, mistakes when you set the assignments, etc. Is that clear, roughly? And the certificate is usually issued by the IIT that is conducting the course. And yes, the logo of the IIT will come on the certificate. Assuming that we are doing a completely uh, theory-based course, it's purely just lecture, you know, lecture recordings. What would a unit and a lesson look like? For example, what if I'm doing something like post-structuralism, where I'm going and talking to the camera about what this is all about? Would that be the unit and uh, the yeah. yeah, just that's it. So the course, which is intended to be 20 lectures, it would have 20 units. Yeah, one hour is roughly a unit, and presumably you might want to split that one hour lecture into say three or four segments just for easier consumption and that's uh, that's the idea. There wouldn't be 20 units, there'll be only eight units okay. for eight weeks. No? Right, okay, okay, so that's how it works. So eight okay. weeks, you typically have eight units, yeah. each unit will uh, be eight. So it's up to you, so for instance, one week you can release three units if you like. So it's, it's completely up to you. If you want, you can keep the unit as three lessons. Some people, I mean you saw, I think Nagendra and some units, that's 
two two units every, every week. week okay so he was releasing two units every week and maybe one one and a half hours per uh, unit or something and it changes from instructor to instructor these are all completely flexible there is no uh, no point there but i think good good things to keep are this like uh, like 12 minutes 15 minutes those at the end of the day the internet connections are not that great you go outside of the cities only in some places you have it maybe you have a only a dongle or you're using it using a mobile device for it it's good to have smaller videos which can be buffered better right on top so some some of it helps if the videos are small maybe the sizes are small people can distribute it on sticks or something they just like it if it is small what's the total duration of the course the lecture duration 8 weeks and we are suggesting not to do more than 3 hours per week so average we are expecting 2 and a half hours per week so that comes out to 20 hours 20 hours is half of a course that you have here that's the idea so you can do only half of the <laughs> half of a typical four credit course or three credit course the course building site is maintained still maintained by google fully completely by the yes. so in case you no know, we have some issues on sunday evening while uploading who do we contact and what are the i think we have not had any issues on the portal absolutely no issues so far i think we had a lot the first time there was it was completely experimental right now you can ask her i think the portal just never fails only thing that was fail is what one point i think the dns lookup from our server here was failing so invariably it just never fails so we can give you also the the ip address or the i mean the other url i mean this online courses.nptel.ac.in is just pointing to an app store appspot.com url and we can give you that also so that you can always have access to the portal it will just not fail I mean, it's it's so the chances are almost roughly the same as chances of google failing so it just won't fail those things are i'm not no so that you have to still ask i think they are working on that last feature it's not automatic so you have to create the programming assignment and then ask for a mushak update so i'll i'll talk about the programming assignment separately so we have to release two and a half hour uh, two and a half hours of video lectures per week yes yes total so i mean two and a half average so you might have a two hour week and you might have a three hour week so duration of one video lecture um uh, okay so two and a half hours of video lectures what do you mean by duration of one you can break it up into lessons and uh, we are suggesting a lesson time of 15 to 20 minutes so but that's again i mean it's completely flexible some instructors don't like that they say okay no this unit has to be 45 minutes then it's fine i mean you can't do anything about it sorry yes. uh, in assignments what about the numerical problems uh, how do we handle them when uh, step by step marking is required so you have to split the problem into multiple steps and create multiple problems that's the way must be multiple questions just like gate does it gate can gate for the multiple uh, step questions they break up one question into multiple questions so you have to do that better is to make uh, like um, uh, mcq multiple choice mcq is one choice you can also have numerical answers so you can check with a range or exact uh, numerical possible is possible only one answer should be there uh, only one answer is in for multiple choice yes M multiple choice is possible. possible yeah you can have uh, any number of choices we have to make assignments like that means uh, one question objective one type assignments yes either some answer or that but okay so let me let me step back a little bit for technical courses that's how it's going to be for programming courses that's how it's going to be for say humanities courses you can have essays nothing stops you from asking the student to fill out a essay now then you have to ask how do you grade it right so there are two options one option if the numbers are small if you see that there are only like some say 100 submissions and you have enough ts you have a lot of energy to look at the ss then you can simply ask them to look at the ss and grade i think is that possible okay so you have to figure out you no know, individually they probably marked i mean if it's ss i don't know how they mark it it's is complicated the other option if the numbers are big it's gone to thousands or something and you can't expect a few ts you have to be able to grade it the other option is to do peer review okay so in peer review uh, among this thousand questions are graded by each other okay so it's like you say you have a class of 40 collect the assignment sheets and then randomly redistribute them and get the students themselves to grade it right 
and uh, each each um, quest uh, each uh, whatever assignment can be graded by multiple students and you have ways of aggregating the scores and studies have shown that this is a reasonably good practice to get good scores but i don't know i don't know what the answer is to that question it's a very hard thing to say but yes you can have the answer as a text box in which a person types an essay or a description or a definition and it's graded on an individual basis i think it's possible i have to get back to you with more details on that but ideally i think multiple choice questions cover a fairly wide range i would say and i would definitely encourage people to have multiple choice questions to at least reduce the effect but if you think essays are needed then you have to worry about the grading Sending out uh, emails and hard copies, and on our IIT Madras Facebook page, they want to do it amongst their groups, their institutes, their uh, yeah. mailing groups. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we'll. Uh, so so for instance, uh, so there are some popular courses for programming and all that. Lots of people sign up. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's they are popular for obvious reasons, but. If for, for humanities courses, for instance, I, I don't know how many people sign up, and those are unknowns. We have to venture into it and find out. And if you have resources, if you have networks, social networks, particularly, all right, that's the make big uh, push here. If you have social networks where people kind of uh, discuss these kind of things, or you think your friends group is big enough, you have a million friends on Facebook, then you can advertise the course. on your uh, portal also so we are going to send what some facebook post from the iit madras IIT thing madras facebook page, page will, will come the other iits if you have uh, but if you are friends with the iit madras how many of you are friends with iit madras nobody gets updates from iit madras huh? so you should become that so then <laughs> iit madras whatever official posting they make you will get that and then you can like it and then all your friends will see it facebook page you should ask them to post it there yeah. okay. do that here About thousand colleges, we are making a print of all these ten uh, courses, and we are sending it out to them. So, if you all have specific mailing groups, for instance, Professor Rajesh was telling me that there is some group wherein you have these mailing groups. You can send it out to them, or you have the other colleges, you can do that. You can ask us for brochures, which we print also, and if you want to mail it out, you can. Or give us the addresses, we can send it out from here. You have the most colorful poster that was ever made. <coughs> so, enrollments will close on Jan. 16th yeah so that's the it's about 45 days so typically for very popular courses we average about uh, 1000 a day right roughly yeah, for uh, computer science courses that's how it goes so you're, you're looking at those kind of numbers so numbers are big but you know not everybody will who registers will participate very actively so the forums are dominated by a few people and it's nice to see okay Anything else? So let me see. Just show of hands. You are PA for you are not PA. You are which course? Which one? Oh, yes. Okay. You are from Kanpur. No? Sorry. What about you? Um, history of English language and literature. Aisha. Aisha. Oh, from the humanities. Yes. Same. You are the instructor for the same. Yeah, I yeah, I know you. I've seen you. I've seen you in church for all places. <laughs> oh, Raj, okay. What about you? Oh, that's the chemical. Arun Tanger. You guys are in computer science. All of you. All four of us are in. Okay. Oh, okay. The same way people are not here. Okay, okay. okay. They had exams. So does that cover all the courses or? it roughly covers all the courses so you guys are comfortable with what is what happened here <laughs> no i mean if you want some more time i'll be happy to have someone sit with maybe just the three of you or maybe you can even catch chitra right do you know where she lives sarayu extension Sorry, you extension. Oh my God, it's tough. You are probably in here, is it? Sharavati. Sharavati. Okay. So anyway, we have our office staff. She is Jainti. Yeah. We have uh, Sentin, Navin, who are all attending. They'll all be familiar with the entire back end. So in case you will need uh, help any day, you <laughs> can just walk into our office. Huh? They are all smiling at me. <laughs> so you can 
Yeah, yeah. So I think it uh, helps to sit down with someone. We are, we are hopefully going to make a video of this uh, thing and put it up also. So you will have that. And on top of that, uh, anytime you need anything, just walk into our office and Bharti is always in our office 24 hours. So you can catch her and ask her, she'll uh, guide you through that. Okay, so the first few weeks, like she pointed out, it'll take more time, right? Definitely it'll make, take more time, but after you go through, uh, it'll take uh, lesser time. You're just one TA for the courses. Yeah. One more? I think it's good to have two. You're also one. Okay, I think it's good to have two. Just for the reason that, you know, one person doing, other person checking is always better. Next to say right. today was the selection of new PhD MSD and one motion will come. Might come. Okay. So maybe we should supplement uh, these guys with mm -hmm. some people from our office. Just at least for the verification and things like that. It will help. I think having one more is very, very important. One person doing, one person checking is ultimately better. You had two, no? Uh, for three. the first three, four weeks, I was the only DA. Okay. But then I got two more. People. But Chatra is a super DA, so she can do everything on her own. It's hard for <laughs> others, I can tell you. Particularly in CS, I mean, you have four. Four is a good number. I think the in effort is much more intense for you guys than <laughs> for these guys. They have programming assignments. It's much more painful too. So there are like million things that will go wrong, as opposed to you guys. The only thing, another thing we need is, uh, next the TCS will be coming on. So, uh, in case of question formats, now that you know what is available, please let us know what you would want to see here. If you need assignments from the Google thing, you have to tell us clearly what you would want. As a question, as an option for the answer. For instance, the uploading of an image with the description, how do we incorporate it or something, we check with them. We we'll need it before the course starts. At least we'll have to tell them now, give them three weeks time to see whether they can tell us yes or no, whether they can implement so that you can change your formatting. And uh, then we'll go to it. And second, the same thing has to be shared with TCS also to say that we need it in the final exam. Can you implement it for us? Otherwise, you have to change your question pattern. So if you could give it to us, you know, ASAP kind of, then it will be easier for so us. That part was clear, no? And maybe I should repeat what you wanted. So if if you know that you're going to ask a specific type of question, both either in the assignments or in activity or in the final certification exam, and if you think that format is not being supported by the current version of Course Builder, you have to tell us today, tomorrow, yeah, so somewhere very quickly so that we can get going. And we do have people who are quite smart about programming get get back quickly, but it takes time, this process changing a live portal takes time so you have to tell us exactly what type of question you want or and some other new feature that you need sometimes we'll come back and say sorry not sometimes most of the times <laughs> we'll come back and say sorry maybe but not immediately maybe but yeah but it's possible in the past we have had we've managed to for instance nagendra asked for a matrix type question quite late and that got pushed into the course uh, quite quickly so it's possible to do those things but keep that in mind Oh, they are going to say something. Okay. We have uh, our exam partner is uh, TCS, and uh, we have Praveen and Gautam here who would uh, brief you through uh, some of the steps uh, that have to be done during the course and as preparation for the question paper for your two different exams. March 22nd and March uh, 29th. There is also an intermediary uh, this one where uh, it is called a static question paper or a mock where uh, people uh, once they start going through the course uh, students would like to know how the question certifi uh, certification exam would be so there is a dry run kind of where they would like to see and then only register from the past experience we find that people who see the mock test they feel okay this is something I can do then they register for the exam so in between uh, by around uh, Jan 20th range we would uh, probably need to have the static mock also ready. And then we will work towards a question paper. So TCS has their own processes for the question paper creation and uh, certain templates and lists that you will have to give them. And this uh, registration we are planning to open February 2nd and closes February 28th. So that gives about one month for students to register for the certification exam, which is for anybody who has enrolled in the course. Anybody can take the exam. And uh, so they will just walk you through the process. Anything? Exam is 50% of the total uh, score. Let's say it's 100. 50% from, comes from the, 
certificate examination. 50% comes from the assignments course. We will bring it down to 100. Yeah. Assignment scores also, this time we gave some... I don't some think that's a constraint. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Keep it as 15. Yeah, keep it as 50. You can keep it as anything. 25, 25. Yes, yes. There's no problem. Anything. anything is fine. Actually, you can even say, I don't care. Uh, I, mean, I don't care about the 50, 50. Maybe okay. I want to make it... Uh, okay. 75, okay. 50. Okay. 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 Who's doing say two courses and uh, you know last time we went to this every time if he keep changing the framework you know he'll also get confused of so what is the certification criteria what is it? so kind of we are just putting in some guidelines 50 of that 50 of this 50 of that so that he at least follows the course and you know more than the proportion I was interested is it a 50 mark paper or a 100 mark no no it can be paper? anything you have a 10 mark paper we can use it to send and make it 100 yeah. we just bring it to peace Also from the NPTEL office perspective, no? So I think we would be contacting you, uh, teaching assistants to help us uh, keep on track with this uh, eight-week schedule. So we would send you reminders to give you sir, to give us back certain things with the deadlines. We will be sharing that with you, and uh, uh, we will share the templates in which we would want certain things from you. And uh, for the announcements, also we have started standardized templates in terms of uh, when the registration is opening where is the registration links all those things which we will uh, be sending it to you and you can post it on the forum and for any difficulties with respect to the course builder you can contact our office Hey, just one more thing, uh, on the videos that you are hosting on Course Builder, we would also request you to put it in the drive. The email ID which is your faculty login for the Course Builder has been shared with the faculty. So we request you to put the videos, the final video versions also there. We would be hosting that videos on the NPTEL server also. And as the course goes on, this also becomes a part of the NPTEL repository. So we will keep picking it at some regular intervals. So that there is a also a backup to the course builder. You can put the highest resolution of the video that you have. And if you have the assignments as PDF also, please drop it in there. These videos are short. Yeah, right. 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 So your Google account comes with a lot of other things. No, you have Google Mail, Calendar, drive. something called Drive. Yes. Get the video file and put that on Drive. So, uh, uh, good evening everybody. So, this is uh, Praveen Sridhar from uh, Tata Consultancy Service and we are specifically from Ion uh, which takes care of all the online assessments. And uh, I have uh, Mr. Gautam uh, Kathigain who is uh, going to handle this project as a whole. Uh, he is going to be the national project manager. And uh, so, uh, we take care of the assessment as a whole and uh, he will be the national project manager for this assessment. So, where do Tata Consultancy Service, Ion, pitches in uh, for uh, this course is like uh, our job starts uh, once your course builder thing is done and once all your courses have been put and uh, evaluation starts. Uh, your certification, 50% of your certification value is from an assessment which is a proctored exam. And for that uh, they have to come to a, a center where they are going to write an exam and it's going to be an online exam and uh, they will be graded using that as well. So that starts from the application management part of it. So Tata Consultancy Service, ION as a whole, we start coming inside after, from the application management part of it and uh, our work goes till the results processing part of it. So, and as a TA, as a faculty, uh, what are the responsibilities that uh, you need to do? Uh, because we have a couple of uh, things which we require from your side as well for uh, the complete uh, process as a whole. And uh, so, uh, there, there are around four diversifications which comes in as a responsibility of a TA or a faculty and all this will be clubbed into one thing called as your question paper. So for question paper it is your responsibility to give us uh, some of the data which we want 
and majorly we use around five jargons or something uh, from our end and we will explain you what the jargons are because we don't want to go with uh, saying uh, the jargons like metadata file and uh, we have something called as IAAC and we don't want people to scratch their head and say what it is. First explain us what it is and then go into this. So we will start with uh, giving you a simple term on what these things are exactly and then we will uh, tell you what IAC means or a metadata file means and all this stuff. So this is like uh, more of uh, training the trainers part of it. So uh, this is a complete flow on how we are going to take uh, this session forward. Uh, we are around five basic things what we follow here. First we start with the question paper software installation in your faculty system and, uh, and then we go for the basic assessment template. We will tell you what it is exactly. Then uh, will be the metadata file which we will explain you in a simple term what it all means about. And uh, then uh, we will be discussing about the IAAC software as a whole. This is ION uh, Assessment Security Center uh, software as a whole. We will tell you what it is also about. And then we will go for the timelines and thanks uh, Dr. Andrew for alerting people on the deadlines as well because we work with the very strict deadlines because when we miss deadlines it is going to be uh, giving us a very bad damage on the assessment part of it as well. So we want people like TAs and the faculties to adhere to the deadlines so that uh, we uh, give a very smooth performance on the operation sites as well. So we will start with the first slide. Uh, so question paper software installation, we call it as IAAC. So it's ION Assessment uh, Security Center, so that is the software's name and a pretty large name as well. But, uh, but what we do is, uh, we will be installing this in your faculty system and that is the place where you need to key in your question paper. And because we don't want to key in a question paper in just an excel sheet and uh, uh, float it across and say this is going to be the question paper and all this stuff. So this is going to be a secured way of conducting an examination where we, con uh, where we, con uh, where we convert your question paper into a encrypted mode uh, called as .igx format in our uh, slang and so we need this uh, software in your faculty or TA system so that uh, we convert the question paper into an unreadable format. So uh, the question, so this software is all about that only and what we do is uh, we will be giving so uh, a step by step procedure document we will be giving it to you all and your faculties as well and uh, we will be conducting a demo uh, on, on an accepted date and uh, once all the faculties accept on a date and uh, communicate that to the NPTEL office, uh, we will uh, we, uh, we'll be in close touch with the NPTEL office and they will be communicating it, uh, the same thing to us. So uh, we will be uh, arranging for a demo and I guess uh, uh, there will be three places where we are going to arrange a demo. and. Uh, so that, is the, uh, so that will uh, give you a hands on on what the software is all about and what all steps you need to follow for uh, uh, converting a question paper into an IGX format. And uh, the first uh, and foremost thing what a faculty or a, a TA has to do is fill this assessment basic template. This is nothing uh, more than uh, basic fundamental data about your assessment. It has number of sections which you are going to have in, the, in your final assessment. Number of sections, number of questions in each section. Do you want an option shuffling for each section, uh, each question? You want a question shuffling as a whole so that uh, a candidate A when he is going to sit next to candidate B gets totally a different, not a set of questions but different numbering. So first question here will be the fifth question there. So this is one type of option and uh, so this is a format which has to be filled well in advance before we start off with any of the question paper module. So this has to be clearly filled and uh, you need to decide well before your question paper module starts about the data what you are going to put in because this is going to be the final data. This is the same uh, file which you are going to use for both the mock that is the candidate uh, hands on mock which is going to be released in the forum as well as for the final assessment uh, part of it as well. So this is a decider where you need to decide on number of sections you are going to use for the final exam, number of questions you are going to use, whether you are going to shuffle the questions, whether there is going to be a negative marking, all these thing, uh, things have to be decided and has to be put here. And once it has been put here, it is frozen. So once it has been put here and we send it to our uh, technical team for converting uh, and for generating a, a metadata file which is uh, which is a configurator type of a file which is a simple excel sheet but uh, that is the format which our software reads. So that will be configured from my technical team. So for that we need to first fill in this and give it to them 
and uh, once it has been configured we cannot change anything there so please discuss with your faculties and if uh, uh, if only TAs are here please discuss with your faculties and when you're filling this this is going to be the final thing which we're going to take it for the final assessment I'm just reiterating it again so uh, uh, be careful in fa filling this and once this is done the first phase of your question paper creation is over uh, then we go for this uh, something called as a metadata file which is a very simple excel sheet We'll show you the Excel sheet as well. We'll uh, give, we'll be floating a procedure manual where we'll be having step-by-step -step procedure on what the software and how it works, and also about this metadata file. And we'll show you a metadata file if you want from here as well. Oh, I think it's an on another laptop. So. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be a simple uh, Excel sheet. Uh, which will be floated to you, but it will be configured with the data which you give uh, in the basic assessment basic template. So uh, this sheet will again be floated down by the NPTEL office to you uh, and there are going to be two uh, separate sheets what you need to fill. One is going to be for the mock test and one is going to be for the assessment final assessment as a whole. So on the process flow first comes the mock test which has to be released on the day when you're going to uh, uh, plan releasing your application for uh, uh, enrolling for that exam. So that has to be released here. So mock test goes in line with your uh, final application form uh, go live date. So that is the mock test uh, thing. So what you do and what you need to do is in that metadata file, you need to put in questions uh, which are going to be which are going to be seen by the candidates. It is uh, the candidates mock hands on is going to be like uh, every candidate we cannot expect them to have written this ION exam. So what we release is we release a mock test kind of a thing which will be a hands-on on the UI front of the ION solution. So that is the exact screen what these people will be seeing when they come for the exam on March 22nd and 29th. So that we will be releasing. For that we need some data like what all type of questions because once uh, you fill in the assessment basic template you will be deciding on uh, types of questions what you are going to use like questions like you will be having a lot of questions I will tell you what all the list of questions we already put in uh, uh, you will be having multiple select questions multiple choice questions long answers short answers so any type of things you need to first decide and at least for this mock each and every type of question what you are going to use has to be in this mock like uh, once a TA plan or a faculty plans yes I am going to use multiple choice and multiple select question for my assessment final assessment then for mock at least one question has to be on multiple select question and one question can be a multiple choice question correct and once a faculty decides that this time for this assessment I'm going to have only 25 questions what we can do is uh, we cannot have only two questions for the mock so we need to act the actual set of 25 questions for, but for a mock what we can do is you say that I have one question with multiple choice uh, question which is a multiple choice question and a second uh, question which is a multiple select question. You can repeat the same question again for 25 times for at least for the mock so that uh, you give us 25 questions which can be repeated because uh, this is just an hands on for the uh, candidate for a candidate who is going to come for the exam on 22nd and 29th on March. So for that you can give the same questions as well because we are not going to grade them in any point from that mock exam and we are not going to show them the marks as well we are not going to key in the right answers as well so because of that you can give us some dummy questions and you can repeat the questions as well but each and every type of question what you are going to use for the final assessment you need to have them in your mock metadata file and then is your actual uh, QP metadata file which is very similar because this is going to be one hands on for the people who are going to fill in the metadata file you, you would have already gotten uh, hold on what metadata file is all about and how to question, how to key in questions, choices and all. So once that is done, actual question paper metadata file, you need to start keying in. And this uh, will go on the flow. So once you fill in the actual question paper metadata file, we'll go for the next uh, thing. Uh, you fill in the uh, metadata file, uh, we'll be installing, I, as I told you well before uh, the start of this, session uh, that we will be installing a software and we will be showing you a demo right. So that uh, comes here so ION as, uh, assessment security center is that software's name and our people will be coming and uh, giving you a demo and a, a process manual on how to use it. There will be three basically three people involved in a question paper creation for any assessment online assessment as a whole and for this assessment it is going to be two people. One is going to be the content manager 
who creates the question paper that might be uh, TAs who will be uh, keying the question paper and uh, will be checking on the choices, number of choices given, the correctness of the question and all this stuff. Once that is done, I guess you will be forwarding it to your uh, uh, faculties for review, right? So that will be a reviewer part of it where uh, they will be, uh, once you key in the question and uh, you see the candidate's view on how it is going to be seen on the candidate's uh, screen, uh, the faculty reviews, proofreads it and signs off on the question paper saying that this question paper is right, it can go on for the bundling. Bundling part is like, because we have 10 subjects here, we don't want to have individual question papers uh, floating around. So uh, what we decided, we will bundle all the 10 subjects into one bundle, which will be IITM NPTEL uh, March to 20, uh, 22nd uh, exams bundle. So that will have all the 10 question papers. And uh, for a student who is uh, enrolled for one exam, he sees only his question paper. So that is a bundling process. I will tell you about the bundling process later. So once uh, the faculty signs off on the final question paper saying that this is my final question paper and pulls in a metadata file out of our software, they will be sending it to the NPTEL office uh, because we wanted to do it in a secured way. So that will be sent through, uh, we'll decide on how it is going to be sent. And once that is done, uh, the NPTEL office will be having 10 metadata files which will be for 10 uh, subjects. So once that, uh, once they get all the 10 data metadata files, what they do is the simple uh, process called as a bundling process, where they will not be checking on the, uh, they will not be checking on the correctness of the question. They will not be proofreading it. They will not be signing off on any of the question papers because it's already been done by the faculties. They will just take them, put them into the software, seal it and bundle it. They need to give a password here and that will be trained uh, on the NPTEL pa office part of it will, uh, they will get trained on that on bundling part of it because uh, your process gets end with the reviewer uh, thing where you sign off on the metadata file, there ends the process of question paper creation for any faculty. The bundling and the sealing and the bundling part of it will be taken care of by the uh, NPTEL office. So this is a brief gist on what is going to happen on the question paper creation front. There will be a lot of questions on what exactly has to be done and when it has to be done. So uh, this is the activity flow which I have already uh, discussed in this session. And this is, uh, this is a step by step procedure what has to be followed. And please don't worry about uh, the UI front of the software or the metadata file or for instance about the assessment basic template as well. For each and everything, what for each and every jargon what I have uttered here, we will be giving you a process uh, flow diagram on how to fill them and how to take them into the software and you will be individually getting uh, uh, trained on this as well by our people. So they will be giving you a demo on how to use the software as well. And so we will start with uh, just reiterating this uh, slide and for people who are sitting in the back, it is like uh, the question paper software installation and demo to faculties. Uh, it is the ownership of the Tata of, of, of the TCS and uh, we have decided the deadline to be on December 20th and uh, these deadlines might change, this is highly, highly tentative deadlines, they might get changed but for an idea on when it starts and when it gets ended, we are just giving you a deadline part of it but the final deadline will be <coughs> circulated by the NPTEL office to each and every faculties uh, for each and every subject and once uh, we get that basic assessment basic template, we will be giving it to the NPTEL office and they in turn will be circulating them to the 10 faculties or say how many faculties for each subject. And once that is done, we request everybody like to decide on number of questions you are going to use, number of sections you are going to use, all the options which has been possible there. And once that is done, fill the basic assessment, temp assessment basic template and please send them to the NPTEL office well before Jan 10th. Because this is going to be a deciding factor for both your mock exam as well as for your assessment, uh, final assessment. So once we get that, we will be generating our solutions team or the technical team will be generating a metadata file as I told you, which is the format which our software understands. So that has to be configured for that at least we need at least a week's time. So because of that, once we get this assessment basic template, we will configure them immediately and we will be circulating that metadata file. Uh, to the NPTEL office, in turn they will be circulating it to you. So that is the place where you start keying in your question paper for first for the mock. Mock, uh, I think sign off on the mock uh, uh, a metadata file, it has to happen before uh, 22nd, uh, 22nd January. Yeah, 22nd January. So once, uh, because I think we need to really uh, work uh, fast on this. Once June 22nd we get uh, the metadata file, we will start working on the 
candidate mock link. As I told you before, this is going to be exact screen what a candidate is going to see when he comes for a March 22nd or 29th exam. So when he's going to come and see, he cannot come and complain like uh, say, uh, in mock you gave me only two sections, now, the, now there are three sections. So this is the place where, that's why I just wanted to reiterate saying that the assessment basic template is going to play a very important role because for mock and for the final assessment, we are going to follow the same pattern blueprint, whatever we call it. So once, is, once that is done, we will be giving that mock link to each and every faculty through NPTEL office. And uh, so once uh, the mock link is being given, uh, you can test on the mock link and see how it works, whether the questions you are given is rightly working, whether the, uh, because there, there might be instances where short answer question will be given and uh, there will be an MCQ question coming for the same. So please test them, uh, test them on, uh, on all this correctiveness and you can forward uh, and you can sign off on the mock link. The faculties can sign off on the mock link on 29th of January and we will be going, uh, because I don't think we are going to change this date. February, February 2nd is going to be the final date. All the other uh, dates are tentative but this is the final one. February 2nd we are going live with the application form. So when you are going live with the application form, we want our uh, mock test should also go live on the same date. So that is how it is. So that's the target what we are kept. So and for the actual question paper, uh, once you fill in the actual question paper like on March 9th, once you get uh, comfort, hold on uh, the metadata file and once you start really quick on working on this uh, actual question paper part of it on the metadata file, uh, you can share the metadata file on 9th March to the NPTEL office. So that I think the faculties will take care. So once they share that with the NPTEL office and once they get all the 10 metadata files with them, we are ready to bundle it. So once we get it, uh, we'll be coming because we don't want to do it on an internet based uh, way. So we come here, there will be one system which is uh, isolated from the internet connectivity and we'll be using that system to seal the question paper with all the 10, uh, quest uh, seal the bundle with all the 10 question papers and bundle the question paper into one. And that uh, for the 22nd exam will be happening on six, both bundling can happen uh, happen on 22nd, uh, on 16th March for both the 22nd and 29th exam. And uh, there is one thing called as uh, the VPN connectivity where we tunnel uh, the question paper which has been created from uh, the IIT end to the data center of Tata Consultancy Service. So that has to happen at least one week before the exam. So for uh, the 22nd exam, we'll be doing it on 16th March and uh, for the 29th exam, we'll be doing it on 23rd March. So and that uh, format which is going to be sent from the IIT office to NPTEL office uh, uh, to the data center is a unreadable format. It's an IGX format which cannot be, uh, it's an RSA algorithm what we have used. And so people cannot easily hack on this and get a, a question paper so easily. So that is one thing. So these are the uh, brief timelines and tentative deadlines what we are given. So and this is the process flow uh, of what we are going to follow. And please, it's our personal request from the uh, TCS ION front and from the NPTEL part of it. So we want you to adhere to the uh, deadlines which is going to be fixed by the NPTEL office because if we are going to miss on each and every deadline uh, from this activity flow which has been given, we are going to have a very bad damage on the assessment operations part as well. Uh, so that the, and that will increase more headache to Gautam, I guess. So, uh, so that is uh, the complete flow of it. So, if there is any questions, uh, the forum is open for questions. Okay, as of now on the exam centers are not lovely. We are uh, actually opening it out to for students to be able to write to be able to write the exam in at least hundred cities across India. So that is what we try to open the centers up to them. But then we found that you know this time actually what happened was for it, the two exams about seventy five only they had chosen out of the hundred, and even in the seventy five there were uh, many cities where there were just about one or two candidates who had applied. So since that didn't make economic feasibility for us, we kind of clubbed them to the nearest, you know, saying that within three hours or four hours, if they can reach the next center, which is closest where we can operate the exam, we move them to that, ask them again for the concern, done some refunds and stuff. So this is a process we'll be following every time. So ideally, we would like uh, the exam to run in 100 cities across India if we have reasonable numbers. So that is what we are targeting for the exam. Since there are 10 papers, we expect maybe it's better next time. So that is one thing. Uh, this December 20, uh, 20th thing is another thing that we push for once the courses are open. We'll ask you all for some dates as to when the TCS people can come to 
the faculty room where you all can also be there and probably install the software and get a hang of that uh, creation of metadata by looking at the question of software and stuff. So that is another date that we will look at. So immediately from our end, I think we will create that group first of the uh, email IDs which we have given, collect the email IDs from the other people who have not attended here, make the thing and we will start pushing data on that uh, group saying that okay, this is coming up, that is coming up, please follow up, start up. So that is something. Number 20th, we would like you all to ensure that the pages are up and give us a sign off that yes, our code, our course page is up. If you can go to the faculty, that will be good. Yes. These are the two immediate things, the remaining I think we just go on email and so forth. Our phone numbers are there. I think all our emails are carried. Email will send you mptel at iitm.ac.in. Regular thing. We work from Monday to Friday, uh, 9 to 6, 9.30 to 6 here. But otherwise, also we are contacted. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.